Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, Ikamala Minangusne, and if you're a returning subscriber, then thank you for stopping back by. If you're new here, please do hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell so that you're notified every time I upload a video. So, today's video is going to be the start of the law series that I promised you guys. So, this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to do the series in three separate vid videos. The reason why I'm going to do that is because I don't want to have one long as boring video. Like you guys might get bored. Well, <laughs> if you think law is boring, I don't think you should be watching this video in any case. But basically, I don't want to make it into one very long video. That's my point. So today is going to be the first um segment of the series um throughout the series i will be taking you guys from the time you're in high school up until the time that you get admitted as an attorney because that's what i am i will also be giving some little information that i know about being an advocate although i won't be able to give practical um examples because i'm not an advocate but i will give you like the the administrative like information about it so if you guys do want to find that out do keep on watching this video okay so at this point you have decided that you want to become a lawyer and i'm going to use the term lawyer instead of attorney or advocate because i do not want to generalize this video just to be about being an attorney right so You've decided that you want to become a lawyer. You can either either be in high school or you later on in life, you decided that, you know what, I want to study law because there's no age restriction. Like it's like any other degree. You can study it at any time of your life. Right. So you've decided that you want to become a lawyer, which means that you need to do the degree which is a bachelor of laws degree which is called an llb degree i'm going to write the latin word which i cannot pronounce um, on the screen for um LLB. the abbreviation is llb but the name the full name is what i'm going to have here on the screen which technically just means bachelor of laws right so let's start high school right there are no specific subjects that you need to do in order to become an attorney. I need to reiterate that. There are no specific subjects that you need to do that are prerequisites that you need to do in order to become a lawyer, right? So there's always been this thing that you need to do history in order to become a lawyer, which is not true. But I think that the reason why they've, in, they've, they've always said that you need to do history is because when you do your first year of your LLP degree, you do learn about the history of the South African law and where it comes from. So I think it makes your knowledge more broader and it's much easier for you to understand it if you've got history knowledge from school. But it's not a requirement like when you do your application it's not a requirement that you need to have done history but now there are but now here's the thing your english mark needs to be above average let me put it like that you need to have a good english mark in order to be able to apply for um, your LLB degree so you can have the points but if your English mark is not what's required you won't qualify because English is one of the um, most important subjects um, when you want to study law okay so I'm gonna speak about the requirements that you're gonna need to have in your matric certificate so You've decided you want to study law, you pass your matric, but now this is what your 
results need to look like in order for you to be accepted to study law and i'm specifically going to be speaking about ukzn right i'd like to think that other universities also would have the same benchmark but you guys would have to do your own research if you want to know like what you the requirements you need to to have at vets or the requirements that you need to have at for instance university of Zululand or unisa etc etc so the requirements that i'm technically speaking about right now are ukzn requirements right so you're obviously going to have to have passed your matric with a bachelor's pass which is a b because the degree is a bachelor's degree so if you got a d or an h you unfortunately don't qualify to study um law but unless you do upgrade your marks and then you get a b you can then apply right so i'm first going to speak about the people who um have an nsc certificate so these are the people who matriculated after 2008 so if your matric certificate is a nsc certificate these are the the requirements that you're going to have to have you're going to need 32 points and th these 32 points are excluding lo and you get you know you guys know how to calculate points i mean you know um so you're going to need 32 points if you did English as a home language, your English needs to be a level 5, which means it needs to be a 50 to 69. If you did English as a first additional language, it needs to be a level 6, which is 70 to 79. Right. So this is what I mean when I say your English needs to be above average in order for you to qualify to study law. Your maths literacy, if you did math, maths literacy, it needs to be a level 5, which is also 60 to 69. And if you did pure, pure maths, um, it's going to be, it's going to need to be a level 3, which is 40 to 49. So technically, if, if we, if I can put it like this, the only requirements or the only subjects that you need in order to do law is english and maths or english and maths lit which are subjects that you are forced to do in any case in school right so then if you are um you got sh you you did your matric before 2008 so these are the people who have senior certificates so let's say um you are i don't know i don't know how old you'd have to be in order to have completed matric in 2008 or before so for my senior certificate guys you need 36 points it's not like nsc um people you need 36 points and english first language if you did english as first language you need to have passed with higher grade which is d um and if you did english second language you also must have passed um with higher grade which is a b i don't know how that operates like the, my oldies <laughs> would know all of this so these are the requirements that you would need to have had to have when you pass your matric so this is how your matric certificate technically should look like in order for you to qualify to uh, for you to be able to apply and then you know be possibly be accepted to study the actual degree so how do you apply you apply via the cao forms i think we all know what a cao form looks like i think you get them at municipalities schools also give you cao forms um yeah so you apply via a cao for for, for english cao form so what you do is you're gonna put law as your first choice because obviously you want to study law so what you can do is you can put it as your first choice and you can put it as a second choice and possibly as your third choice why do i say this you can put it at different universities so that um if they don't accept you at ukzn they might accept you at this other university right but also bear in mind that 
um, sometimes if you apply, if you put as your first choice as UKZN and a University of Zululand, for instance, sometimes you find that if UKZN PMP doesn't accept you, um, UKZN Howard College could accept you because it's the same university but you only applied at one of the campuses that's what happened with me i i put it put it as my i, I actually didn't put it as my first choice because <laughs> because of other reasons um i think i had it as my second choice and then um i got accepted at ukzn pmb and then two days later i got accepted at ukzn Howard. So it can happen that if you don't accept it and get, get accepted in one of the universities, you will get sep- accepted in the other university, even if it's the same university and even if you put it once only. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying. But anyway, my point is put it as your first choice and your second choice. Don't just only put it as your first choice. Put it as your first choice and your second choice and then um, put it in different universities so that you have a greater chance of being accepted, right? So you can either study the degree full-time or you can study the degree part-time. So if you study the degree full-time, this is eight semesters, which means it's four years, or you can study it part-time, which means this is 12 semesters, which is six years. So people will have their reasons on how and why they want to study it um, full-time or part-time. Another nice thing about law is that because it's four years, when you exit, when you get your degree, you get your degree as an honest degree. So when you graduate, The next step, let's say you want to further your studies. The next step after that is you're going to do your master's. You're not going to do like degree, then honors, and then master's. When you graduate, you already have an honors degree. So the next step after that, if you do want to further your studies, is you're going to do your master's. Right. Fine. So you now get your SMS or whatever, or your email, and they tell you that you've been accepted. Yada, 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 yada. and you get all excited and the stress the anxiety if you straight from high school the stress the anxiety you know and the excitement of leaving home and all of that so now you start study. so your first year is gonna look something like this it's gonna be introduction to law and I think foundation to law and then you're going to have to do English. It's a must that you do English, which is why your English mark needs to be above average. My battery is low. <laughs> um, you're going to do um, your introduction and your foundation, I think, and your English. And then the rest of the modules are just going to be elective from any, like you can do psychology, you can do, like you, you're allowed to do any other electives so you don't do a lot of you don't do much actually let me put like that in first year you don't do you just get introduced like slowly into like law and you know this is when you do your um history about where the south african law comes from and all of that stuff right then you come to your second year so your first year is gonna look something like this it's gonna be introduction to law and i think foundation to law and then you're gonna have to do english it's a must that you do english which is why your english mark needs to be above average my battery is low (laughs) um you're gonna do Um, your introduction and your foundation I think and your English and then the rest of the modules are just going to be elective from any like you can do psychology you can do like you you're allowed to do any other electives so you don't do 
a lot of you don't do much actually let me put like that in first year you don't do you just get introduced like slowly into like law and you know this is when you do your um history about where the south african law comes from and all of that stuff right then you come to your second year second year is also a bit you know um slowish you do do more law modules like family law ish i've forgotten some of the modules you guys it's been quite a while um but you're also still doing electives like other electives from other faculties and etc etc but now you start getting into like the actual law modules all right this is when you start feeling that you're studying law it starts you know a little bit you know you start feeling that you're studying law and this is when you need to i'm not saying you shouldn't be serious from your first year but this is the time where you need to need to need to start getting serious because if you do fail a module it will be easier for you to make up that module in the following year with your other modules instead of failing a module in your final year or in your third year it's much harder you know to but just work hard and don't fail <laughs> that's the point right so then you get to your third year this is when you're doing now a lot of um law modules you do your laws of succession you go into depth in a lot of law modules um and i think the electives that you choose at this point as stand to be corrected are only law electives at this point so law related electives right so pasile first year or pasile second year or pasile third year now you go into your final year h for hectic guys this is when it starts like stinging you like for real like already from third year you are in very deep like you're in very deep and to be honest a lot of people by the time we get to third year they were already gone like either they failed or they decided that they don't want to do this anymore <laughs> and they were like peace out but final year is obviously stressful because it's your final year and you want to finish but it's also got the most difficult modules ever you guys like it's just a lot it's just stressful it's just a lot of work it's just you've also got moods which is like your at your like sort of like play play court where they you sort of like go to court but in your school and they teach you um you have to present basically as if you're in court so this is the time where hopefully you don't have any like um legs as we call them imminent from previous years and you can focus on just your final year and just you know just getting it and just passing through it because it's very it's a very tough thing to fail in your final year because you now know what you're not going to finish your de- degree in record time but i mean don't feel any pressure about finishing your degree in, in record time like own lane own pace and all of that stuff right so these are the things that i am going to advise you on about your law um time like your time in varsity your social life is going to be very very limited like especially from second year going onwards because i tell a lot of people that law is not hard law is not difficult law is like the easiest thing ever what is hard is the amount of work that you have so you need to work extra hard because of the amount of work that you have so your social life is obviously going to have to decrease because you're going to spend most of your time studying people know how big law books are it's like accounting books like they are massive and they're just like a lot of reading and you know so your social life is going to decrease 
your starting hours are going to be very, very, very long. They're not going to be like, oh, uh I studied the night before. I mean, a lot of us used to try that, but you're not going to survive, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. You need to give your time. uh, You need to give yourself enough time to study because it's just a lot of the weight of the work is just ridiculous. Um, you know, so your studying time is going to need to be ridiculous. Like, I know how a lot of people, um, because at UKZN, we have like a law library, a specific law library. And a lot of people, it's available to everyone. Like anyone could come there, but obviously law students go there a lot. And a lot of people always used to say, like who weren't studying law, they used to say that they hate the law library because the law library is so quiet. And it's so serious and you know all of those things but it's it's not by choice it forces you to be like that if you're a law student so yeah um your social life is going to decrease um studying hours are going to be ridiculous um some tips that i'm going to give you guys is apply for vacation work as early as you start your law degree because VAC work gives you an advantage when you're applying for your articles because sometimes the same company that you are doing your VAC work could take you when you need to apply for your articles right um, also start applying for your articles in third year don't leave your articles for final year because you're going to be so stressed out and when you don't get taken anyway it's going to be a lot. So start start, start applying for your articles um, at third year because how it works with l- most law firms is you apply this year for, for the second year. So you apply in 2020 for 2022, basically. So start studying, start um, applying for your articles in third year so those are my advices my tips and you know like the basics that i can give you guys um about and then after that you're going to finish your four years or your six years and then you are going to you know graduate which is what everybody goes to varsity for which is to graduate but i'm gonna end this first video here because I don't want to start the what happens after um, a varsity video because it might just drag on this video for too long so I'm gonna stop it there. if you guys do have any questions um, do leave your questions down below and if I can answer them I will try answer them um, we will also be discussing, like I said, um, in the next coming videos, life after varsity, um, how to become an advocate, and also if what happens if you didn't qualify, like if you passed with a bachelor's degree, with a bachelor's pass, but you didn't qualify, like you didn't meet the specific requirements. I'll also tell you guys how you can still study law if that happened to you. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video and please do not forget to like, to subscribe and to definitely share this video. Bye!